Well, it's that time of year again, and when it comes to 3D printing, what a year it's been. 3D printers actually work now, and the crap ones seem to have pretty much died out. So I guess I'm out of a job. <laughs> nope. In this video, we'll go over last year's predictions and see how they panned out, and we'll go over five more for 2025. It's gonna be a wild ride. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse, and congratulations, you made it through yet another year. In 2024, we saw 3D printing companies fully embrace high-speed printing, with the technology continuing to evolve, becoming more accessible and easier to use. But there was an awful lot of noise, with AI slop at every turn, and the cost of living crisis continuing into yet another year. I have some thoughts about how this year's gonna pan out, but first, let's look back at last year's predictions, starting with number one. 3D printers will become less about repairing, calibrating, and upgrading, and more about simply 3D printing. This absolutely happened, and that trend is continuing. There's still a huge, booming community of enthusiasts who love creating their own 3D printers from scratch with open source plans, but companies are moving further and further towards ready-to-run machines which work really well, but are completely closed source with their own proprietary hardware. Personally, I've always viewed 3D printers as a tool, so I'm not too upset with this direction, but it is sad news for anyone who likes to tinker and upgrade their machines. You still can, it's just not as easy or as universal as it once was. Number two, trusting recommendations online will become harder. Sadly, I feel this one also became true. And honestly, I find it really hard to find reviews for pretty much anything these days that I actually trust. And this isn't just isolated to 3D printers. All tech product videos on YouTube seem to be sponsored or influenced in some way by the brands these days. And I'm honestly not surprised. AdSense just isn't enough to pay the bills anymore, despite this platform feeling more packed with advertisements than ever before. Thankfully, I've never fully relied on AdSense to get by. I've always viewed it as just a little bit of an extra bonus. Plus, I have the support of members from the Makers Muse community because without you guys, I really wouldn't be able to do this. Number three, when in doubt, go for the professional market. Without a doubt, 3D printers seem to be getting a lot bigger recently. Brands that used to produce small i3 style machines suddenly offered huge prosumer machines at massive price increases and others slid further still into the professional market segment. I don't really have an issue with this. Companies can do what they want. I just think it's interesting to see these legacy brands withdraw from the space that most of us are actually interested in. Number four, the repository wall will heat up. Well, between printables, Thangs, Makerworld, My Mini Factory, and many others, designers of high quality models have been living it up over the past year with all kinds of rewards paid out as platforms fight for supremacy and many of them have even incorporated paid communities into their offerings. A ton of money has been poured into each platform to try and make it the de facto site that you go for for prints. But the cracks are starting to form. Rewards are beginning to dwindle, and model theft, that is someone taking your model and uploading it themselves to generate points, is an ongoing issue with very poor moderation. I do really like what Bamboo's repository Maker World did, which links a store full of useful mechanical components that you could incorporate into your electromechanical projects, but I'm not a fan of this sort of thing. One question remains though, where would Thingiverse be if it had kept developing instead of still looking like this? Number five, AI generated models will spam the internet. AI has infiltrated every corner of the internet. It is unavoidable by this point. But thankfully, at least of right now, AI 3D models are still pretty new and they only make up a very small percentage of the files across all repositories. This is definitely going to change though, and one of my new 2025 predictions reflects my thoughts on the matter. And number six, 3MF files will be misused, maybe. And I'm happy to report that so far, so good. I have not been made aware of any viruses or exploits being distributed through 3MF. However, I was recently made aware of an exploit that MeshMixer is vulnerable to, and Autodesk stated that they're not going to fix it. Considering that the last version of Respixer was released way back in 2018, that's not surprising, but still a sad death for an amazing bit of software. So with that mix of good and bad, here's what I think is gonna happen in the wonderful world of 3D printing in 2025. 
Number one, anyone will be able to access 3D printing and CAD, but there's a catch. This is a Chromebook. It costs $260 Australian to buy new, and it can run on Shape, an incredibly powerful CAD package that runs on the cloud. Cloud apps like Onshape dramatically reduce the hardware requirements you normally need to run powerful CAD software, and people are becoming rapidly aware of this fact. You can use this anywhere. There's an internet connection from any device to design awesome things, and it's all backed up on the remote servers. 3D printers are also heading in this direction as well, with brands like Bamboo Lab using their servers to make remote connection and monitoring of 3D prints easier. But there is a catch. As our society drifts towards entirely cloud computing on dumb devices, where you don't really own anything, everything you create will be stored somewhere else, and well, it might just blink out of existence one day, or get locked behind a paywall. There's no denying that cloud is convenient, but if you can afford it, I recommend having a system in place that keeps working if the internet goes down just in case. Number two, the rise of digital minimalism. I gotta say, I am done with the constant bombardment of crap across all social media platforms. More and more, I feel exhausted trying to keep up. And for 2025, I decided to take a step back. And it seems I'm not the only one who feels this way. Just take a look at what teenagers are carrying with them these days. They've swapped their smartphone cameras for old point and shoots iPods have skyrocketed in value. I even saw a girl the other day with a Tamagotchi. I had these in primary school, so it's super cool to see them making a comeback. As 2025 rolls forward, I think this trend away from terminally online will continue as a growing number of people embrace what Cole Newport describes as digital minimalism in his book of the same name. I think this kind of thing will be really positive in the 3D printing space, as people use the technology to make their own projects instead of just mass consuming content online. Physical events like open source are an excellent example of how hungry people are for real world connection with other makers and I am so here for it. Number three, DRM attempts will be made. I hate to make this prediction, but I really do feel that someone somewhere is going to attempt this kind of thing in the 3D printing space this year. DRM stands for Digital Rights Management, and it's the feeble attempt at control that companies or governments reach for when they feel they need to boost revenue or satisfy national interests. 3D printing companies aren't new to DRM to lock down consumables or parts. It's actually very commonplace for industrial machines, but the hobbyist market segment has never taken kindly to it. And when it comes to controlling these digital assets, well, you can't stop the signal. Number four, the AI 3D model shitstorm is coming. Yep, just because it didn't happen last year doesn't mean we're in the clear. Oh boy. AI articles, images, and even music have already flooded every social media platform, YouTube included, with low value slop. And 3D models are next. Bamboo Labs Maker World has a few nifty model generators like this desk organizer, which I genuinely feel is really impressive, but it was this Printmon maker that had my alarm bells going off big time. Let me be clear, there's no shortage of talented 3D modelers in the 3D printing space who make really cute models, many of whom release these models totally for free across various platforms. So the existence of this AI model maker raises the question, what data was it trained off? Many of the designs are very Pokemon-like, but I honestly have no idea and I couldn't find anything about AI in the maker world terms of service about training models either. As mentioned before, many of these 3D printing repositories now offer rewards for popular models, so I think they're going to be hit with a tsunami of AI generated models this year as people try to make money through just sheer volume. But that's just my opinion. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. And number five, more people will use printing for household items and niche community interests. Over the past two years, we've seen 3D printers shift from a hobby in themselves to a reliable tool that anyone can use to make things. And I think its reach is going to continue to grow in 2025. It's funny, my sister's always been supportive of what I do, but she's never really cared about 3D printing. That is until she realized she could use it to 3D print custom characters and terrain for her Dungeons and Dragons campaigns. And recently it shifted from, hey, can you print something for me? To, hey, I want a small 3D printer of my own. Because these machines are so much more reliable than they were just a few short years ago, people who aren't technically minded, 
who aren't your stereotypical tinkerer, are now actually able to access 3D printing to make stuff. And I think it's that area of community growth that's going to explode this year. I promise you, there are niche communities out there that will discover 3D printing this year and will have a dramatic impact on how they do the things that they do. And if you're one of those people who have recently gotten into 3D printing, then welcome. Yes, it can be daunting, but it's an incredibly powerful technology and I have the perfect resource to help you along the way with the latest and greatest edition of the ultimate book of 3D printing tips and tricks. In this revised and expanded edition, it's been brought up to speed with tips, tricks, and advice you can put into practice right now with the latest and greatest 3D printers. There's tips about slicing, printing, CAD, and even how to come up with ideas, and it encompasses over 10 years of 3D printing experience in one place. If you'd like to check it out and help support the channel, you can find it linked in the description below. So, what should you expect on Maker's Muse in 2025? To start with, much less reviews. When I started, new printers were coming out every few months, and the upgrade cycle was, quite frankly, ridiculous. Now though, companies are releasing much more polished machines that last longer, and I am here for it. But it does mean less reviews are needed. I'm also quite frankly sick of the rampant manipulation of reviews through bot comments, under the table payments, and the whingy emails I get when things don't go their way. I have never had a 3D printing company sponsor this channel, and my opinions have always been my own, but it's getting harder and harder to justify the time it takes to make a proper review, when I'd much rather make some interesting projects or a useful tutorial. I will still do reviews, but only for something that I think is genuinely unique or offers something fresh. And I will also be implementing an upper price cap of $2,000 US for printers that I review in future. I think the stuff that's happening in the industrial 3D printing space is really interesting, but if you as a hobbyist can't access it, then I'm not really interested in showing it on the channel. More combat robotics. These little bots have always been a part of my identity since I was 16, and they honestly got me to where I am today. They're an excellent way of learning about design, 3D modeling, 3D printing, and electronics in an exciting, accessible way. And I'll be focusing on the smaller classes that you can make yourself and compete with at competitions all around the world. One of my previous predictions was for an increasing need for easy to use CAD, and this is still very much the case. Yes, AI 3D models will continue to proliferate, but I don't think they'll ever replace precise, intentional 3D design. So I'll continue to test free and affordable CAD packages on the quest for one that's actually good. And yes, FreeCAD recently hit release 1.0, which is a huge milestone, and I'll definitely be revisiting it. Sadly, however, Onzul has shut down. Damn. More puzzles and mechanisms, just like the good old days on this channel. I love to explore how weird mechanisms function through 3D printing, and I have a massive backlog of designs I want to explore. Same goes for puzzles. My cats have figured out the previous puzzle I did for them pretty quickly, so I have a much more advanced design in mind, and you'll be seeing it later on this year. And last, but certainly not least, thank you for watching and supporting Maker's Muse. Let me know in the comments below what you think is going to shake up the 3D printing space this year, and if you're interested in checking out my new ebook, The Ultimate Guide to 3D Printing Tips and Tricks for FFF and FDM, you can find it linked in the description below. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Bye.